Hey, the shopping list just says grapes. What kind of grapes are we getting? Grapes? I don't know. Red grapes are good. I like green grapes, but red grapes are basically the same thing. I like blue grapes. They don't make blue grapes. They should. It's only fair. Who is they? Who the hell do you think is in charge of grape colors? Well, whoever it is, they should- Hold on. Look at that! The kobold points to a stage in the middle of the town. There is a man in the stocks, surrounded by a group of shadowy figures holding vile-looking weapons and instruments of torture. There's only one face not masked in shadow or hood. He is a tall, gaunt, white man, looking to be around 70 years old. His hair is gone from his head, except a white semicircle around the back. His eyes are permanently half-closed. He mutters on to the procession. Let it be known that this town is under siege. You may have noticed a few buildings in the town burning down recently. This was not an accident. Hey, uh, I gotta go. Eddie, what's wrong? Eclair has already run the opposite direction, cutting through the crowd like an assassin. Fat Fox looks on, puzzled. What got into her? If I had to guess, I would say this grotesque scene going on right here. Man, what is going on? I've never seen something happen like this in town. Yeah, this is pretty scary. Now, to discuss the rampant destruction of our town. As you may know, many buildings were destroyed recently in random fires. This could be an act of arson, but we all know the truth. This was not the work of a human. This was the work of a dragon. <gasps> a, dragon? A, dragon? A, dragon? a dragon? Yes, a dragon. A beast as ancient as it is deadly. Many years ago, Dragons bathed the very earth in a lake of fire, an endless torrent of flame. It was only with the hunting and control of the dragons from whence our world of water and land came forth. Dragons are beings that wish no peace, only war and death among all humankind. What about orc kind? And goblin kind. I'm trying to talk, gods! Now then, the reason I have called you all here today. Something must be done with this dragon. How do we know it's just one dragon? Yeah, what if it's a bunch of dragons? What if there's a hundred dragons? <laughs> now, now. We have reason to believe there is only one dragon, though there is no telling how many dragons may be lying in wait. And be warned, dragons rarely work alone. They may have any number of creatures in their thrall. It was a dragon burning down these buildings, destroying our crops, killing our citizens, women, and children. But lesser minions could be anywhere. Your neighbor may not be who they say they are. So watch the skies for dragons. Do not trust any strangers or even friends you have not known for long. And prepare. War could be upon us at any moment. The wrinkled old man turns and faces away from the crowd. He begins to walk down the stairs, dour look on his face. His guards follow. Did you hear that guy? He was talking about the fire we found a Claire in. Oh, weird. That's the only fire I can think of that happened any time recently, though. Oh, right. You don't think, um... I don't think what? Well... Rebby, I'm insulted. You don't think a Claire did something, did you? She was a little... out of place. What was she even doing there? Um, getting a delicious pastry or bun, Rebby. Besides, you heard the old dude, a dragon did it. We were right by it, though. I didn't see any dragon. Yeah, and you'd think we'd hear wings flapping or something. I guess I am a little skeptical. Maybe a dragon didn't do it. What? The small red lizard looks up. A 
bony, decrepit man stands above her. You don't believe a dragon did this? Oh no, we definitely do. Well, my friend pointed out that there's no evidence is all. No evidence? That fuck stop. Yeah, like there's no eyewitnesses saying they saw a dragon. No sounds of flapping wings, etc., etc. But it could still be a dragon. So what makes you the expert? Going against the crown? Questioning my authority? We weren't questioning your authority. <laughs> no. And now you call me a liar? No. We simply mean that we didn't see the dragon while the bakery was burning down. And how would you know better than I? Well, sir, we were there when the bakery burned down. Guards, arrest these kobolds for conspiracy, accessory to arson, and accomplice to dragons. What? We didn't do anything. Yeah, in fact, we saved a person from the fire. Oh, a person, you say? And what does this person look like? Um, actually, uh, I, I don't know. I didn't get a good look. You aren't even looking me in the eye when you say that. A liar! Lying kobold! Have her drawn and quartered. Oh no, Rebby. They're gonna throw quarters at me. That is not what that means. Oh, then I'll be okay? Whew, that's a relief. The guards surround the minuscule lizards. Rebby gives a fearful look to fat fucks. Their eyes meet as they look upon the face of their oldest friend. It may be the final time they see each other, at least in this life. But then, Rebby blurts out an idea. What if we help you kill the dragon? <gasps> hmm. Go on. Well, we know we're not allied with the dragon, but you don't. So we could prove it by killing the dragon for you. Rebby, stop. Stop, 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 Rebby. And Rebby. how would I know you killed this dragon? We'll bring you its head. Yay! Yay! Rebby, we're innocent until proven guilty. We can get a lawyer. What are you doing? Oh. You don't want to kill the dragon. That proves you are guilty. We can get a lawyer to help us kill the dragon. I love killing dragons. Yay! Then it's settled. You will go forward and slay the dragon. And if the dragon's head is not in the town square within a month, your heads will be displayed instead. Yep. And now we can leave town and kill your dragon. Oh, you'd really do it alone? Don't you need some help? You're such small creatures. Oh, we wouldn't want to trouble you with that. We'll just leave. Leaving town completely unobserved? What's the worst that could happen? Why don't you swing by a blacksmith first? We can get you suited up for your slaughter? Hmm? Great idea. We'll head over there now. The two kobolds head for the smithing district. Rebby holds her head high and walks forward, jauntily. How the fuck are you so happy-go-lucky? I'm not. I'm fucking terrified and having a panic attack. But we've gotta sell this. Sell this? How the fuck do we kill a dragon that might not even exist? Let's go to the blacksmith, get our gear, leave town, and never ever return. What? This is our home. And Eclair doesn't even know. Do you want to get your head chopped off? So, what kind of restaurants do you think are in the next town? They stop at the first smithy they see. I see my... Huh? Oh, it's fine. Do you have any dragon slaying gear? Ah. I don't think we're going to get anywhere here. Hey there. What do you need? We need gear to help us kill a dragon. A dragon? You're gonna kill an innocent dragon? It's not an innocent dragon. It burned down a few buildings. Allegedly. You know what? Get out of my store! I'm a blacksmith. My gear isn't meant for murders. I mean... Technically. Out! Ugh. I don't know what we're gonna do. I don't even know if there's any blacksmiths left. Oh wait, what about that one? Rebby points over to a normal retail store. The kind that wouldn't be out of place in your average shopping district. Are you sure that's a blacksmith? It's in the blacksmithing district. Hi, welcome to... Rebby stares in disbelief. Hey, you're the goblin from the beach. Oh, uh, hi. Goblinda looks slightly sweaty, grinning ear to ear to compensate for the awkwardness. Do you work here? Rebby, do you know her? This is the girl I told you about, the one I met on the beach. 
Uh huh. You might be getting me confused with someone else. Oh, uh, okay. Um, do you sell weapons here? I mean, this is mostly a jewelry store. Didn't you read the sign? Oh, um, okay, well, I guess I'll be on my way then. Hold on. You don't have anything that can help us kill a dragon? Dragon? Yeah, we have to kill a dragon. The government is making us. Oh. Oh? Oh! You're going to slay the dragon? Yeah, that's us. Come right away. Follow me. The goblin grabs the red kobold's hand and drags her to the back of the store. Rebby follows along, just out of loyalty to her friend, Fat Fox. Feast your eyes on this. The goblin turns a light on and pulls back a curtain. A full suit of armor and a comically shaped sword were sitting in the spotlight. This is my killing armor. I've been building it for like as long as I can remember, dreaming of the day I can go off into battle. Wow, and you're gonna let us have it? Are you stupid? No, you can't even touch it. This is mine. Oh, then how the hell does this help us kill a dragon? Well, hmm, I made this armor and sword myself. I blacksmith when I'm not working here. I'm not really good enough to sell my wares yet, but what if I make your gear and then I can go with you to kill the dragon? Can't, we have to leave tonight. Well, what if I go with you and I make the weapons on the way? Wow, no problems there. Fat fucks, how is she gonna make weapons and armor without a forge? Oh, let me worry about that. There's ways to make weapons without fire. Stone spears and such, you know. I don't think that's gonna kill a dragon. Uh, look, who's the blacksmith? I'll worry about making the weapons. Come on, Rebby. Don't you think she's cute? Fine, we'll leave tonight. Wait, won't your job be mad you're leaving? Piercing little kid's ears for like 10 hours a day for a few bucks. I'll take a few weeks off. The boss can suck my dick. It's settled. We'll leave tonight. Oh, but uh, I gotta find someone and tell her before we leave. Later that night, Rebby is packing her bags for the journey at her house. And a knock at the door. An armed guard storms in, splintering the wood in the process, holding a little red kobold by the neck. This traitor was attempting to flee. What say you? I wasn't fleeing. I was trying to find my friend. I wanted to tell her I'd be gone for a while. Let her go! She's telling the truth. The goblin walks through the door. Let her go! We're getting prepared to travel. We're going to slay the dragon, remember? Fine. But if you're not out of the city within an hour, the vizier will have your heads. And that includes you, green one. Goblinda sticks her tongue out. We'd better leave immediately. Everyone, grab your rucksack. But, Eclair. Come on, girls. We're leaving right now. The three stand at the city limits. Upon a soft hill, the kobolds turn and say a silent goodbye to the homes they've lived their entire lives. No weapons, little food, and a cold, uncaring wind kissing their cheeks. They walk into the pitch black night and the lanterns of the town fade away.